everyone, it's Emily. Welcome to Mama From Scratch. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how I gave my laundry room a makeover for under $150. I was able to do a couple different DIYs, repurpose some of my decor, get a few things off of Amazon and Arteza, and make the space look really beautiful on a budget. And I hope that this will just inspire and motivate you to make over a space in your home as well. So here is the before of the laundry room. Yes, it is a hot mess. It is basically a catch-all space. I just close the door and look the other way, and I want to change that. So the first thing I needed to do was take everything out of the laundry room. That way I could really see the space for what I could do to it. And then once I got everything cleared out, I knew I wanted to add some more shelving to it, but also wanted to remove the old shelving. I'm not a fan of wire shelving. I think it's really ugly. So I got myself some pliers, pulled those little nails out of the wall, and yes, it leaves some holes, but nothing a little bit of spackle and some sanding can do and some new paint. So I once I removed all of that, I just went ahead and fixed up the wall, and that gave me a nice blank slate to start with. So if you're excited to see how I gave my laundry room a makeover, then give this video a thumbs up and I want to say a big thank you to Arteza for partnering with me for today's video. I will tell you more about them as we get into the DIY projects. And I wanted to tell you that today's video is a collaboration with my really good friend Lynette Yoder. She is going to be sharing with you her laundry room makeover and you will not want to miss it. It turned out absolutely beautiful. She is super creative. She shares lots of DIY home projects, home organization, decorating ideas, as well as vlogs. And she is a mother of three and she is such a sweetheart. And I am so happy to be able to collaborate with her on this video. So I will leave her laundry room makeover video down in the description box below so you can go watch after mine. You won't want to miss it. She has more of a mid-century modern look to her home and she nailed it with the laundry room. So definitely be sure to check it out and tell her I sent you. And if you haven't been coming over to her channel, welcome. I love to be able to inspire and motivate you through DIY, home decor, and room makeovers just like this. So with that, I hope you hit stick around and become part of our family and let's go ahead and get started in the laundry room. dry fitting. So I took the old shelf that was there and I already marked on the walls as you saw where I was going to plan on putting the shelf. The shelf is going to be here and it's going to have a little overhang. Well, opening my washing machine, the lid barely stays open. So I either have to make my shelf shorter, which I don't want to do, or I need to move my shelf up, which I don't want to do either. But then my the lid actually goes all the way back. I wouldn't mind if it was had a slight tilt, but it's basically on the verge of going forward. And I don't really want that because, you know, when you're doing laundry, you know, you don't want the lid constantly closing on you. So I've got to figure out what I'm gonna do. Sometimes you still run into glitches of things that you didn't think that would even be an issue. Yeah, sometimes it can be an issue. <laughs> so I'm gonna think on this for a minute and I'll get back to you in a minute. Thinking about the shelving, I decided to just shorten the depth of the shelf. So instead of it being 12 inches, I just make this shelf 10 inches that because I still wanted to make sure I had a shelf there so it'd be actually functional for the laundry room. So I started by making my marks on my two by two. Uh, the first cut was the wall uh, support and then I cut the legs for the floating shelves here. So each leg was eight inches in length and then I decided to place them about 15 inches apart or so depending on what looks even but I also made sure to mark the studs that will be on the wall on my board that way I wouldn't put one of the legs in that area because I want to be able to screw it to the wall. So next you're going to take a drill and you're going to pre-drill two holes for each leg that way they don't spin on you. I use two and a half inch screws here you can use what you need to. Now a typical um, floating shelf will be basically like ladder, there'll be two edges, which even if you do, you want to wait till you get it on the wall. Because as you can see here, I'm putting pre-sunk holes in where the studs will be on the wall. That way I can actually mount the shelves to the wall. So I'm using the mark I made on the wall, 
my level to help with me, and then I'm taking four inch screws and screwing those right into the stud. The first one, I don't countersink, I leave it about an inch out, that way it just holds there for support, and then from there I will countersink it and keep on going. So this is typically after you get all your screws into the wall, you would wanna put your front um, ladder piece on. For mine, I ran out of two by twos, so I ended up using a one by three, which is fine because I'm gonna do a three inch front face on the shelving. And so I'm making sure everything is good. It wasn't quite flush on the very end, so I just marked it with my pen. That way I can make the cut. Then I pre-drilled through the one by three into the two by two on each end, and then put a one inch screw into each of those ends and then after I got that completed which you do want to add some glue on there just for some extra support I use type on two premium wood glue and then I'm going to use my brad nail gun and I'm using one inch uh, nails for the first part and I'm nailing into the two by twos and then I'm putting my uh, top shelf piece in this um, shelf is uh, 11 and a half inches and then the other one was 10 inches so now I'm just nailing all the way in and then I'm adding a bead of that glue on the front face and then I'm going to put my finish edge piece on here so it looks like it's a floating shelf and then you can um, put a bottom piece on there but I didn't find that necessary because you can't really see underneath unless you're like really putting your head underneath there so I just finished it off by nailing it all together and that's the way they turned out then I took some wood filler and filled in all of the nail holes let that dry and then sanded it smooth This isn't quite a brass or a gold, it's more of a champagne color. Um, it still looks pretty good though, it's not bad. Um, it comes with the little brackets and everything, so I'm gonna go hook this up. And for the curtains, I will be adding the ones that I made from my IKEA hack video. If you haven't seen it, check it out, but they look so good in here. Now some of you may recognize this if you've been with me for a while, but this is how I made over my laundry detergent jar. I got basically a pitcher from the home goods and then I rubbed it down in rubbing alcohol to clean the surface really well. And then I took Krylon spray paint in white and sprayed it down once it had dried and it covered really well. You wanna make sure you cover the little um, spout hole as well. And then I went over it with a clear sealer. You can check out my other farmhouse laundry room makeover in our last house. It was really beautiful, I loved it. It will be linked down in the description box below if you are interested in watching that. For the next DIY project, I'll be using these wooden letters I got off of Etsy to decorate the laundry room with, with the help of Arteza. And I wanted to thank them for partnering with me for today's video and sending me the variety of art supplies like these fabric paint markers, the acrylic markers, the mounting tape to hang my wooden letters with, as well as these gouache paints. So I chose these three acrylic markers to see if I liked any of the colors on the wooden letters. I'm going to flip it upside down, that way I can test out the paint colors. These are super easy to use. You simply shake, pump it, and then you can see that the paint kind of coming out and then you just simply draw on whatever object you're going to use. So after seeing which of these colors, I went on to trying the gouache paints and I have never tried this type of paint before, but I am such a fan now. The pigmentation on the Arteza paints is amazing and the finish is really nice. A little bit goes a long way and it dries super fast. So I ended up using the acrylic markers on the E and then the R I used gouache paints to see which coloring I would like best. And so I held those up to the wall to see which finish I would like. 
I am really happy with the coverage of all of the supplies that they have sent me. I would definitely recommend checking out Arteza's art supplies. They have everything you could ever need from colored pencils, art paper, sculpting tools, vinyl, wood rounds, glitter, all the paints you could ever need for DIY projects. Everything will be linked that I'm using today in the description box below, including their site and their channel for more inspiration. And I will include a 10% off coupon code down there. That way you can shop and save. So I ended up liking the Van Dyke Brown acrylic marker for the wood lettering. So I chose that one and their paints, pens are amazing. It doesn't bleed out everywhere when you pump it. It is very controlled and the saturation on it is wonderful. It did not once dry out on me and I'm really, really happy with it. So once I got all of those painted, I went on to getting out the mounting tape. As you can see, they send you quite a bit, which is great because you can use it for various projects. Plus it's renter friendly and it can hold up to like 2.2 pounds. So thought that was really nice. I just cut off small little areas. That way you wouldn't see it on the back of my lettering. You peel off the red tape and then you're going to attach that to your wall. So I measured out uh, how far apart it was and then got my level. That way I could make sure everything was in a straight line. And I just made a few dots to where the lettering would go and stay between. And then I ended up making a small line on there too. And I placed mine about an inch and a half apart and if I needed to adjust it, I could. It was really easy to work with. And so I just went on to finishing out the letters on the wall. So I rarely hang dry any clothing, so I didn't want anything too big or bulky. So I just got this um, adjustable wall hanger here to dry uh, clothing when I need to. So I found these woven bins at Walmart a while back when I was doing my linen closet makeover and I kept them and I'm so glad that I did. I decided to put all of my cleaning products in these containers. That way if they were to spill, nothing would leak out. And then I put all of my rags into the other container and these will be going up on the other shelf. I do like these other baskets, but they don't quite go with the theme that I'm going for for my laundry room. They worked good on my last one, but this one I really like the more softer muted tones in here. So I picked up this broom holder off of Amazon and I am so excited to put this up on the wall and that way my brooms won't be seen. They'll be behind the door, so pre-drill and put my wall anchors in. That way it won't pop out of the wall when it's holding up my uh, brooms and it even has hooks on it, which is pretty cool. Now the broom holder doesn't stick out enough to bother the door stop, but the Dyson does. So we added this hinge door stop and you can change the level of it and now the door won't hit the Dyson when I open it. So instead of using my plastic trash can, I thought I would repurpose this uh, tin that I had and put these wall stickers on it and spell out the word lint to catch all the lint and it'd be something cute and decorative. All ready to see the finished laundry room let me remind you of what it looked like before and this is how it looks now
So I hope you all enjoyed my laundry room makeover. Let me know what your favorite part about it is, as well as if you have any laundry room hacks, leave those down in the comments as well. If you happen to miss my last few videos, they'll be here on the screen and also linked down in the description box below with more DIY and room makeovers for you to go watch. If you enjoy these type of videos, please be sure to give them a thumbs up and check out Arteza for all your art supply needs. You will definitely enjoy their products just as much as I do. Make sure to check out Lynette's video. And with that, I hope you all have an amazing day. Subscribe if you are new and I'll see you in the next one. My way I'm gonna show you what I'm